Hello, hello. Saturday. I'm gonna wait a minute or two, but while we're waiting, whoever's on, look. Okay, going back, back, back. So, <laughs> you guys, I'm just waiting for everybody to get on. Don't worry, you haven't missed anything. I just thought I would start with my prop here. This is an Echium, and there's a fancier name than that too. They grow completely wild all over where I live, in the coastal area particularly. They love the coastal area. They also love to grow on a little bit of a slant, like a hillside. So I picked one to show you guys, and I have to tell you, it's on its way out, it makes me so sad. So I've been, you guys have been hearing me talk about these forever, but you can see the little bit of brown coming. So every morning I write in my journal and I look out the window and I see, I'm talking, I have masses of these because they just keep growing and growing and self-seeding. So I can shake this when, not in my studio, but I will shake this later and then I'll get lots more. But anyway, um, butterflies, hummingbirds, and bees are just crazy for the last month. And they are starting to get a little brown, but I wanted you to see how huge they are. Aren't they fun? <laughs> I love them. Anyway, I thought I'd show you that while we were waiting for everybody to hop on. What time is it? Two, it's like another minute or so, and then I'm gonna show you my other flowers. But anyway, I thought that they were really pretty. Should pop that in some water. See what happens. Good morning, good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening. Let me get my glasses on so I can see what the heck we're doing today. Oh gosh, they're so dirty. All right, you guys, I am so excited about today's live because we are gonna do so much. I'm gonna talk to you about watercolors, I'm gonna be drawing a dahlia, and Julie, who I'm hoping made it on here. Let's see, did Julie, send a little comment that you're here. Oh, thank you for these. Okay, these earrings are, one of my girlfriends made them. Look how gorgeous they are. I'll find you a link. She's on Instagram called, um, it's B E. Y E designs. I'll, I'll send you a link. Anyway, she's my friend. She lives locally and she sells these earrings locally. And I bought them last a holiday in an auction. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Um, Julie. Yes, Julie. Okay. Julie's there. Julie is so sweet. I remember doing a video a long time ago. Oh my gosh. It's probably a year ago where I showed this one particular piece. And she had been texting me to ask me, like, are you selling this as a print, da, da, da. And I didn't know what she was talking about. <laughs> so she screenshotted this, ready? And I'm gonna actually talk more about it on the art table, but I wanted to hold it up. It is backwards, but, um, and it's something that make. and I, the other reason why I wanted to hold it up is because when you work with watercolors, I work them both ways. Over the last few weeks, we've been having so much fun, just like really being very loose with our watercolors and just being more expressive and a little bit more abstract. But you actually can, and a lot of people do, work really, really tight and detailed and all that good stuff. So I thought when we work on the dahlia i'm also going to show you some areas in here because because you know watercolors that's what's so awesome about it is to just be able to go in and just do all that detail work it's sort of like oh you guys look at look 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 okay okay digressing again so this piece right here this is that dream i had that started my whole business and I'm sure you guys have heard me talk about that a million times, but this is the dream of the painting, okay? What I find fascinating, and for those who don't know, let me know, <laughs> let me know, put it in the comment, you have no idea what I'm, I'm talking about, and I'll show, send you the link to my, my blog about that. Okay, this is a dream I had 10 years ago that completely got me on this ride to having a side business, to having my full-time business, but here's what I find so fascinating about things. That was not, that has not been hanging in my studio 
for a long time, probably over the last year, because when I was in my side business, I was working on the dining room table, the kitchen table, the, the kids' room, and I had put that painting away, but then I bring that painting out, and then there's so many things recently that it's like, you guys, look how similar that is to this, without really thinking about it. I just think that's so crazy cool, like universal stuff, don't you think? It's a little woo-woo, but there's something in me that, um, you know, you can be working on finding your style, which we do all the time. That's what practice does. And sometimes that style is just in you because you're unique. It's only one of you and it's yours. And sometimes it's just kind of connecting the dots. So um, I just wanted to... <laughs> I was holding this up like this and then I looked over and I saw that. Ta -da! Okay, so we're gonna talk about that. One painting Julie likes a little bit more and I'll, and I'll go into um, detail about it. But let me show you the bouquet. And for those of you guys who are new and hopping on to our Facebook group, because I know there's some people coming over from the challenge and I've mentioned this group. Um, every Saturday, I try to bring a bouquet to the table because you know I'm obsessed with flowers. So this one is still the same bouquet that I got last week, and it's just really opening up the tulips. <laughs> the tulips were closed, and they are just like the most gorgeous purple. Look at that, isn't that beautiful? So pretty. The jasmine are going nuts right now. The jasmine is it covers like one whole side of my house and you walk by it and it, it smells so amazing. So the jasmine are in full bloom, which is really nice. And then um, this is a succulent flower right here that I just picked from my garden. And then, oh, you guys, it smells so good. And then this is still the orchid that um, Mark's stepmom gave me a few weeks ago. And it's still amazing. So. All I would recommend you do when you have your garden flowers is just cut, you know, a little quarter inch off the side and um, just a little bit and then fresh water every day if you can remember to do that. It just keeps your flowers lasting so much longer. Oh, and mom, <laughs> nanny's, nanny's here and she just said, you have snowdrops. These are snowdrops too. So the snowdrops where I live are the first flower to come out. Well, we have flowers all the time. We're so, so lucky, but the snowdrops do come out and stay out for a while. So there's one. But my mom is in Buffalo, New York, where last Saturday, I believe it snowed. So she's getting her flowers out now. And um, all right, we're going to get started. Oh, before I forget, I think most of you guys are um, signed up for the challenge. It's not a challenge. There's no challenge. It's just a word. <laughs> and after I wrote it, I'm like, oh, I should have probably, um, when your birth, oh, my birth, oh, okay, that's another thing I'm going to tell you about. One second. Okay, so the challenge, not a challenge, is Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday next week. You guys, I am so excited. I have so many ideas that I want to do. And if you can't make the exact time, there's the replay is going to be in that group. And I will email probably each day so people who are really sick of me are going to get extra sick of me. But um, we're going to do some, oh my gosh, you guys. Oh my gosh. I don't even know if I want to show you. My cat, my studio cat, just brought in a mouse. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna really, oh my gosh, it's right in front of me. I'm gonna really digress again for one funny second. It's not funny, and I'm looking right at her. <laughs> so yesterday or two days ago, a woman came to my uh, studio to buy a print I had. And she walks in, it was like 11 o'clock in the morning, and she walks in, and the door was open to my studio. So I was like, oh, and there's my cat, and I couldn't see the table. Basil, she's new to my studio, she was always in my house, and she walks in, she goes, oh, she has a mouse. I'm like, oh my God, she's got a mouse. So Basil runs out of the studio and leaves this poor little mouse on the ground, and the woman, the woman came to pick up the mouse. 
<laughs> and the mouse bit her, <laughs> like not fully, didn't bleed, but bit her enough that she dropped the mouse. Okay, so the whole entire time I'm thinking, oh my goodness, my husband is going to absolutely kill me because she's gonna get <laughs> rabies from this mouse. Anyway, okay, for people who can't handle that conversation, I'm really sorry, like my kids cannot handle that. She's a hunter and sh so there we go. I'm not, I'm gonna wait a minute to flip the camera. <laughs> okay, where was I talking about? The challenge. It's gonna be awesome. We are going to talk about finding that creative spark. We're gonna do some art together. We're going to talk about just being a creative person and how to practice and do all that. I'm also gonna talk about my new class that's launching on Monday. It's not an art class, but it's a class for anybody who's creative, who's thinking about, hmm, should I sell some of my art and make a little extra money? So we're gonna be talking about that too. It's gonna to be really, really great. And already some of you guys are like finding out where you're from and maybe there's even connections. So I love, love, love what's happening so far. I think we have almost like 475 people. Wouldn't that be awesome if everybody showed up? <laughs> Which I doubt. So many people already like can't make it. It's in the middle of the night, but the replays are always good. All right, I'm gonna do my best to flip this camera around, okay? And you might wanna close your eyes while I do that because you will see her. We're gonna try and, oh, I think the flowers are gonna be blocking her. All right, hold on. I'm going to flip the camera. What time is my challenge? Okay, so I decided that all my lives, no matter what, are gonna be at the same time, which not great for some people I know that like especially in Australia and I so I'm sorry I know that Yvonne and Sherelle and so many amazing people in Australia I just am trying to find a time to get the majority of people so it's 10 a.m. Pacific time but there but as soon as I'm done the replay is like pretty much right there in the group so 10 a.m. Pacific time and it just makes it easier my Instagram lives are also at that same time too because that way everybody's not going to be like what time is it the only thing we got to worry about is when our clocks change and the good news is I think we only have another year or two of that so okay all right you guys cl <laughs> close your eyes do it do it now <laughs> Okay, so da 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 da, here we are. <laughs> Wee, I'm gonna go really fast. <laughs> We're gonna pull our little card later. Oh, darn it. Okay, hold on. Let's see. My phone is acting wacky. All right, good. Okay, so some of you guys know, let me, give me a thumbs up if somebody can tell me that I'm the right direction and we are all good. I will not start till I know that. Does somebody give me, somebody make a comment that they can see my Dahlia. Okay, I got a heart. I think that means that's a good comment, right? Okay, looking good. Thanks, Deborah. Okay, so you guys, um, for those who are new and don't know, uh, I had this challenge, um, let's see, how many years ago? 2015, okay, 2015. And so I did this challenge, it was for myself. It was nothing more than uh, I was working full-time. This is before I think my part-time business. I mean, this is during my part-time business, not my full-time business. And I was doing flowers every day and I would do one flower a day. And it started really simple. I mean, I, I had the whole box right here. Let's see if you guys can see this whole box without showing you basil. So I have this whole box. I sold some of them. I probably sold like 25 of them, but the majority of them are here. And I would just do one a day. And it started like literally like a 30 minute, it was like a 30 minute kind of segment. And I did it in the morning before the kids woke up, before I got them into school. And then I just started realizing how much I loved that 30 minutes. Like it was really, really um, meditative and it was a special time and I got really excited every day about the next day to create this piece of art. Then what happened was the 30 minutes quickly turned into an hour and I figured out how to give myself an hour. I mean, it is a little bit like, you know, self-care, <clears throat> but 
a lot of them I painted. So these are some that I painted and I'm gonna go through these with you. Um, and I just wanted you to know that sometimes it's just starting with one thing and a challenge doesn't even have, you don't even have to have a challenge. It just could be like, you know, once a, once a day for a week you try something. And I just decided to do flowers. Well, what happened was, okay, so I did the flowers I did those for a year, and it was a couple years later that I, I was thinking, what could I do with all of these flowers? And I decided to make, zoom this uh, a little bit, I decided to make this uh, tea towel. So it's a flower sack tea towel. The reason I'm showing you this is because I am gonna be talking about making products um, you know, it's important for people, especially artists out there, to know that you can take your art and turn it into things and sell those things and make some money. And so this flower sack towel was one of the first products that I sold at places. And I continued to change and upgrade the designs, not upgrade them, but just to have them new so that when people buy my towels, they have something new and fresh each season or even each year. So here's what I thought about. So last week after I planted all my dahlias, I did a big dahlia, um, went to a big dahlia sale last week. I thought, you know what would be really fun is I'm gonna do a dahlia tea towel. So just like this, okay, so um, this is a California wildflower tea towel, okay? But it's the same idea that I need to get nine dahlias. And I'll get nine dahlias by creating nine dahlias. And so I was thinking, what dahlias do I already have that I don't have to reinvent the wheel and the ones that I can use? So I was looking through these yesterday. I thought I'd share them with you. And then I thought, wouldn't it be fun if we actually drew one today? And so this is actually from a cover of a magazine. And those who are local know this cover. It's that edibles and it's nice and thick and it actually looks really realistic, doesn't it? Um, so I went through here and I thought, okay, what dolly, this is almost the same kind. What dahlias do I have that I could use for my new tea towel? So I have this one that I love. This was all in pen and I'm just gonna hold this straight. This is all in pen and if I did use this on a tea towel, I would end up painting this, and I love to paint my top, my um, artist tiles with watercolor. So that's how I get the colors. Like so, when I when I paint these, I use watercolor, and then I scan them in. So I start with a black and white uh, drawing, which is what we're gonna do today. But I wanted to show you the other one, seeing as I was in a dolly crazy mood. Um, this is just the, one of those little ones, and then sometimes I'll write a little note, like this is the end of summer, Dahlia. This one, and, and sometimes my watercolors fade a little bit. It was probably more of yellow one, and this one, um, I don't know the names of them. I hope to get better as I, I join the Dahlia Society, too. <laughs> it's so funny. <laughs> but I'm hoping to get better and know and know the names. So that's another one I love also. Oh, Bonnie, the watercolor tile is this. I'm gonna leave this out for a second so you can see it. That's what I order. I love these. That's what I did every single one of my watercolors on and it's a six by six. So then you can get six by six frames and frame your flowers. So this is one I did where I just did a couple. Um, you know, every one is different. Every one, when I, when I paint them, I just sort of, sometimes I crop in really tight, but they all seem to be similar in their design a little bit. This, this must have been the same Dahlia. Look how bright and beautiful it is. Gorgeous red with some yellow inside. This was a little bit fiery crazy. And then you know how some of the Dahlias are, they're not as, I don't know, spiky's not the right word, but um, this one I thought was really beautiful. I love how sometimes the inside of dahlias are kind of closed up. And then I definitely, you know, when I did the year of flowers, I would also do 
a lot of work with with um, just pen and that really depended on the time I had you know how much time I really had some days I did try to do an hour but if I was really tight on time I would just do the drawing and so I pulled all these out and I'm thinking okay what can I use to make my tea towel and I may end up actually making nine brand new ones I don't know we'll have to see you know um, I'm not 100% yet, but I definitely do want to, oh, there's my sister. Hello, Susanna. But I definitely I definitely do want to do a Dahlia tea towel. I think that'll be the next one that would be good in the um, rotation. So if you want to use, I'll show you right now. I will show you one. This is a frame I get made from a local, company let me just do this this okay so this is a frame that i make and this is a six by six um well this is probably six by six inside and then frame isn't that so pretty i just love that so nice all right so to get started today I am going to use this one. And if you guys have like a flower you want to use, you may not have a flower blooming, but what you could do is use a photograph. And I find a lot of materials like that um, sometimes, oopsie, in Pinterest and or in magazines. You know, that's why I have tons of gardening magazines. And, oh, you know what? Before I do that, I, um, yeah, you guys can always send me messages um, as a DM or hello at andreagarvey.com. Okay, you guys, look what I found. When I was looking for my dahlias, I found the mandalas. And we did these last week. So this one I did in April. Not really cute. This one I really liked. I thought it was just so sweet. They are like little dahlias, aren't they? And then I did this one, of course, with a little heart inside. And somebody was asking about my birthday. Uh, my birthday, thank you for asking, is April 26th. My sister who is on is April 22nd. And I um, am going to have, and nobody knows this yet, except you guys are the first, my art courses will all be on sale for probably about a week. So don't buy any of my art courses until you get the heads up from me. Okay. I'm really excited about that. Okay. So, so Robin, I haven't started yet. So good question. What kind of pens do I use? All right. I use either a pit pen or a micron. And because my pit pens are kind of a little bit out of juice, I'm probably gonna use a Micron today. And um, I also have a pencil because I haven't done this in a while. I'm feeling like I might need a little pencil work when I was really in the groove of doing this work, I didn't need a pencil, I just kind of did it. Cause you know, adding a pencil and doing everything in pencil first is gonna add time. And when you have just a short block of time, and really you guys, when I was drawing all these flowers, I did not have any idea that I would be using them to sell my work. I mean, this is sort of in the beginning of thinking about doing a part-time gig. I just was drawing them for the one purpose of trying to have a practice every day, but also trying to have a countdown to when I would quit my job. <laughs> that's all, that's on my blog too. That's a whole nother story. <laughs> all right, I also wanna make sure I've got a good eraser, which is something I could not find earlier. So when you're working with any type of art on nice paper with pens and pencils, you just wanna make sure your eraser is not kind of crappy. So we'll, maybe we won't need an eraser, maybe we will. Okay, so to get started, now this is pretty much the right size, which is nice. And when I um, do this, when I have a flower in front of me and I was drawing a flower in front of me, it's not always the right angle, but this happens to be the exact way I like to draw, which is straight down, looking straight down. I'm gonna put that there. 
and I probably won't talk too much just so I don't mess up. So hopefully you're drawing with me. And what I like to do is think about how to fit the flower in the square. And I'll start by just putting a little bit of a dot right in the middle. So I kind of have an idea. I've done so many flowers where, you know, I start here and it's so wonky when I'm done. But the other thing is too, is when you are creating prints or art or reproductions of something, it doesn't actually matter if your flower is centered unless you're hanging it in a frame because you're gonna scan it into a computer or you're gonna get a, a JPEG of it and somehow it's a now becomes a digital file. So you don't really have to have it centered. But if you wanna pop it in a frame, center's good. So I'm just gonna do a lot of eye, hand, following, following. And I think in one of my courses, I do two of these. I can't even remember which one. Oh, it's the watercolors in bloom. I do two, I do a, a rose and tulips. Like just the way I did these. So that class will be on sale. That's a good one. All right, so I'm very, I'm, I'm drawing with this pencil and I'm drawing it pretty loosely. You guys might not be able to see it. So hang tight while I do this. Hold on, let me even zoom closer. Only because I don't really want my pencil lines to be there. I'd have to erase them anyway. So the less lines I see, the better. I've got this guy here. I already can tell I think I might be having a little trouble getting this whole shape in. We'll see. When you also draw this way, when you when you do a study, these are like studies, it makes you really think and look and wonder about the flower and kind of gets your mind off of all the other stuff you might be thinking about. You almost have no choice. So I'm just gently putting in these other layers my hand is really loose. And if you were here with me in my studio, you'd see I'm looking, I'm going back and forth like a yo-yo. So this is where I might get stuck. It's a little tight right here. The other thing too is I like to kind of move around and not do like one side to the other side. This way it helps you balance a little bit. If you do a little here, do a little there. Kind of like our Medallias, Mendal. <laughs> I did it again, you guys, I called it Mendalias. <laughs> That's funny. Maybe we should come up with a line of product called Mandalias or Women Dahlias, right? Can you hear the crows? They're so obnoxious. And Scout just like chases them and thinks that they're yapping at them. They probably are yapping at them. They're probably like, you can't get me. But he's in the house right now, so that's good. All right, so I'm just swinging this around and I'm 
to go all the way to this edge knowing that I <clears throat> will be scanning this. If I was making this and putting in a frame, then I wouldn't be as happy because it's just too tight, but it's okay. We're just playing and I'm not sure I'll use it even. And sometimes too, when I use the pencil, maybe, you know, I don't do every single little line in pencil and I'll just do maybe the outside layer and the inside layer, and then I'll work towards it. You know, you can experiment. So let me just put, look at this real quick, make sure I'm, yeah, that's not bad. Not bad. You can always adjust. So when I do the pen work, I will um, do all this pen work. I'm gonna do it real quick with you guys. And then I will let it dry really completely before I go and erase the lines. Because your pen is, is waterproof, but it's still you know wet when you first use it. So it's very easy to smudge it. I have a, um, I picked an 05. Oh yeah, this is the 05. This is the 05. I also have an 08 that's a little bit thicker. And for those who are thinking about making reproductions, you also want to think about the line, how thick it is. Is it too thin? It has to sort of be a line that is going to be good and you'll be able to print it. So all of those little tiny things to think about. So the way I also hold my pen is really wacky and I apologize because it's like <laughs> very weird, <laughs> but it's the way I learned back when I was in second grade, I think. I don't know. It's not, one of my kids I think holds it that way too. I remember one of my boys handwriting was atrocious, like so, so bad, couldn't hold a pencil or a pen. And the thing is, these kids, it doesn't really seem to matter because they don't really write anymore. Everything's online, everything's computer. So I'm gonna go around my lines and you may see that I'm not going around them exact, all right? So like already here, I'm like, yeah, I don't really like that line. And that's the great thing about doing a pencil line first is you can adjust as you go. And that's why I love to do it very lightly. The reason I do pencil is only as a guide, that's it. Now it looks like there's this leaf right here, petal, that's flipped down. I also like this one where there's some small petals and then you can see some inside work. So I sort of think I like the that one better. So I'm gonna take that idea. So you can have a few different flowers and Take bits from one, bits from the other. Just doing some of the inside. Every time I do like little stippling, which are these little tiny dots, it always reminds me of college. It took a bunch of classes where we did this all the time. So fun. 
Talk about meditative. You just did stippling all day long. All right, so I've got my first guy around and now I'm just gonna go around here. And what I like to do is start with the outside of the petals first and then go back and add details and little curves maybe, unless they're really big. Hopefully Basil's not bugging them. The two downsides of having Basil in the art studio is that Scout's scared of her now and the birdies aren't very happy, but she's happy. except yesterday a blue jay came right into my art studio and and took her cat food and she just watched the blue jay do it. Like literally had no interest. She must have been full from her mouth and she didn't really care, but I was like, get that blue jay out of here. So when I have everything line, aligned, I'm gonna look at it, I'm holding it up again, I'm looking at it. Um, I might add a little guy there, just sort of making it a little bit more centered and balanced. So then what I like to do is, I would either let this dry. When I say dry, it's like a minute. Um, and then go in and erase the lines. I'm not very confident on this eraser though, so. The reason why I like to, sorry, the table's like, the reason why, oh, I think we're okay. I'm gonna go around and do it. The reason why I like to erase my line, um, Jill, my birthday's April 26th. I don't know exactly what day my sale will be, but I'll probably have it for at least five days. And you'll know, you guys will find out all about that because I think you're all on my newsletter. And if you're not, hop on my newsletter. You can get it from my website, andreagarvey.com. And, um, and I'll also share in the Facebook group when the sale goes live. Okay, so the reason why I like to take the pencil off now is really because I'm gonna start to add more details and then I really don't want to go in a race when I have all this stuff going on. So I sort of want to get my outline done. So I'll do that now. So excuse the shaking for a second. And it's okay if you don't get all the lines, you guys, because you can even draw right over your pencil. I really like using this Stratford um, I think it's Stratford, the artist tiles, 
because they're smooth like cold press, uh, hot press, they're smooth like hot press. They can handle the paint, they don't buckle, and they're really affordable, or they used to be really affordable. I think everything is crazy right now, so. And local art stores would have them. They also make black ones. So if you did some, you know, white gel pen work, they have a lot of black ones. There's a reason too besides that, I think like white charcoal, you know, some people like to use white pencils. Oh, so are they hard to find now? Huh, okay. Well, Amazon, what about Amazon? Does anybody check there or Blick? I think all art supplies are just really difficult these days. Now, if you don't have these tiles and you wanna do some flowers, you could certainly cut up watercolor paper, you know, from a pad. I just kept them all the same way and I was so happy I did that because then I could keep them together when I was all done with them. All right, that's good enough for being erased. Okay, um, so what I'd like to do next is, as I'm still looking at this, there's all of these like little lines in here. I'm gonna go in and start adding some detail. And I like to do these a, a variety of ways. For the dahlias, I like to give um, a little bit of a lip on things. So the other thing I want to tell you about this way of painting, the drawing, is that you could do, like right now, you could start doing the watercolor. And then once the watercolor is dry, you could go over with the black pen. So you can kind of decide which direction. It really doesn't matter. I think I do them both ways. It depends depends what I'm doing like so today I'm not doing the painting so that's why I'm doing this but or sometimes I'll do the line work paint it and then add more line work so I'm just going around So when we have our challenge next week, I'll just send an email too about what to bring. Just like bring a sketchbook, bring some very basic kind of paints. Do not go out and buy anything. And I think all you guys have everything anyway, but we're gonna be doing some flowers. We're gonna be doing some doodling. We're gonna be doing, I think we're gonna do some, some collage on the last day. We'll have to see like, where this all leads us. It's gonna be really fun and I just want you to come with some art supplies. It doesn't matter what they are. So what I'll do next is start to do some, so I did the little bit of the lips, and now I'm going to do some lines. Just gives us a little bit of definition. I'll just start going in and
look free on a type of paper, missed it. Hi there, Constance. Okay, it's um, Stratmer Artist Tiles. And the pen I'm using today is the Micron number five, but I also like using pit pens too, which is this one right here, the Faber Castell pit pens. They're kind of very, they're pretty much very similar. So I'm just doing a little bit of line work to kind of go in and do some shading that way. So it's very different than working loose, but it's still a very meditative way to work, I find. Unless you get really frustrated with your flower, but I do have to say that practice really does make a big difference. Like when I look at my earlier flower, it's really, they really need some work. And Kathy, you said you smudged it with your hand. So what I would do with that paint, with that paper, is then use it for something else, like paint with acrylics or something over it. Turn it into something. I know it's pretty easy to smudge. It's pretty easy, easy to smudge. So I'm just kind of going in and adding a little bit. And at this point, I'm not really looking over here anymore. I'm just doing my thing. I'm just making lines and some shadows and hope that this one will be good enough for me to turn into my tea towel design. And so what I do to, to get these little flowers onto things, like I also had a tote bag. I have greeting cards with these flowers. So my flower thing turned into something that I had no idea. So that's another thing too, if you're interested in wondering like, do you have anything that you've done? That I didn't know that this would be all of these products. So you don't know either. You just have to kind of look and think, oh, oh well that would make a good card. and. Sometimes it's not just the thing that you paint. Like it wasn't just this dahlia. It was nine of them together. It was nine flowers together that changed the whole way I thought of them. So what I do is when I'm done with this and when I'm done painting it, I just have a home printer, okay? And my home printer has a scanner in it. And I'm sure that you guys, for the mo majority of you, you probably have a scanner and you may not even know you have a scanner, but to, um, I would scan them in because a, a scanner is also where like you can make copies. It's the same bed. It's like a glass bed. I would put my piece in there. I would scan it and I would make it 300 by 300 DPI. And I'm going to do a... After this one class launches on Monday about the 10 places to sell, I am gonna do a class on how, the how to reproduce things and talk about, you know, all of that kind of good stuff too. But I just wanted to let you know that it's really not that hard. And um, you can end up making some really fun things because there are so many places that print now. It used to be you couldn't print digitally, and if you did, it was expensive, and it looked kind of wonky, and now, I mean, you basically can get anything printed on anything. It's crazy. You just have to know a few little tips, and you are good to go. You can make Christmas gifts. You can make items you want to sell at a local market. Open a little Etsy store. All the good stuff. All right, so I am 
going to stop here because I really want to talk about this other painting that Julie likes. But you can kind of get the idea, right? So these little these little little guys turned into, I'm gonna have to shut the door. Of course, somebody's blowing around. But they became just something that was really fun and uh, became like my practice thing. And then it was like a few years later that I'm like, ooh, what could I do? I happened to be in a store that sold a tea towel that had nine towels on it. And I thought, you know what, you guys? I can do that. <laughs> so what scanner printer do you use? I, let me show you this other painting too. It's literally a cannon. It is, I think it was either free or, I'm just gonna shut this door. It was either free or it was like 90 bucks. You know when you buy like a computer or something or you know they sell them at like Best Buy or whatever? Nothing fancy. I don't do fancy. Fancy. Okay, I can't really get the tripod out there. So I just wanted to show you this because it's really fun and do some of you guys remember that I had, I can't even find it anymore, but I have this paint painting. Jamie Allen from Hawaii does these gorgeous details with um, gouache. And she loves working that way. And so, <laughs> yeah, Julie, Julie wants this to be finished because she wants a print of it. And I think it's like almost finished. The thing about this painting and probably the only reason why I haven't done anything is because look at the size. It's like a very odd size. It's almost like, how would you even get a frame? Um, you know what I mean? Like, let's measure it. I found, I got this piece of paper. It was like a leftover piece of paper. Hold on, where's my big ruler? And I just started painting it and then I just kept working on the edges, but hey, Patty. But like, I love like these big, I think these are the anemones and then the poppies and all the goodness. And it's just so much fun. All right, so here's the thing though. It is 22 inches across by 14-ish, 14, 15. And yeah, okay, Julie, <laughs> she's so funny. She's like, it, anything, anything, you're right, anything. So next time I'm in Carmel, when I'm picking up my prints, I'll probably get it scanned. So here's the thing. Let me just clarify something and then I'm gonna pull a card and then we're gonna chit chat and, and then I'm gonna let you, and then you guys are allowed to leave. Um, okay, look, I wanna show you something though. So when I take this size and I put it in my scanner, it's small enough. It's only six inches by six inches and I can get this made and, and it's fine. Some people take photos with their phone or a really good camera. That's fine too. It really, you can get amazing quality. But for some artwork, I want to have any of my artwork that I get reproduced, like when I make these little books, and I just happen to do have these here, you guys, because I was doing photos yesterday. But when I get products made, I always get a professional scan done unless it fits in my 8x10 right? My 8x10 scanner. If it doesn't fit in that scanner, I get professional ones done. And you guys, you can find professional uh, people and it's literally like $20. I would get like 20 bucks to get this scanned. And that's really all I need to do to have a high, high res. The higher resolution your image, the better your prints are going to be. So don't skimp on prints, okay? All right, that's my little tip for you. So, um, thanks you guys, I'm so glad. It's thanks Julie, okay, I'm gonna turn this around. Julie, um, and Basil's not there anymore. <laughs> it's even the wrong way. <laughs> Basil's not there and I'm here. Um, Julie was so awesome because I'd forgotten about it. It's been 
it's been in paper and that's another thing um with watercolors is that where is the paper it's somewhere here where is it you want to protect watercolors okay it's really important because watercolors will fade and prints aren't going to fade the prints that, that i make are archival but watercolors will fade <laughs> oh i'm so nice to that kitty are you kidding me she gets all like the crazy love you can imagine um but um that's really important. So I keep this in between two brown sheets of paper and I think I started it like four years ago. So, all right you guys, I'm gonna pull our card. So thank you, Julie. And oh yeah, somebody had a question on the opera, um, opera watercolor, let's just look. It will tell you on it about the light. Okay, this is a B. Hmm, you guys might have to do a little you guys might have to do a little research. Um, on, hmm. okay, so on, I'm gonna, blah, 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 hold on, I'm gonna tell you right now. All different paints, oh my gosh, I opened that door, I'm so hot. <laughs> um, all different paints have a light fastness on it, okay. So here's the thing about the Bright Opera. It only has two stars where this permanent rose has five stars. So the Bright Opera is probably gonna fade a little bit more than another color would fade. And you just have to kind of look on the label. This one by Holbein is a Series B. And so that would also have a little chart and tell you but here's what i found from watercolor i don't put any watercolors in any room that is bright because it will fade and if you want to put your watercolors in something that won't fade then you need to pay a little bit more for uv coated like I think it's the it's like called museum glass and a lot of places sell it so a lot of framing places it's a little bit more money but it will protect you it will protect your art I've had a couple things fade and I was like oh I had no idea but you know we're talking it's not gonna like fade tomorrow kind of thing so think about that also when you scan your work then you have it forever at that bright color it is a gorgeous color it's one of my favorites if not my favorite watercolor all right it's time super tractor okay will not be singing <laughs> i will not sing for you this week okay i promise at least i'll try not to go do 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 while i'm waiting um all right I'm shuffling like the cards. It's it, that's why it's nice to produce it into something else and never. Yes, exactly, Patty. Exactly, exactly. You don't have to really worry about with acrylics and stuff. Okay, I'm pulling a card. I didn't even show you, but I did just pull it. It was I was like talking and I pulled it. Okay, and it's awesome writing. Okay, I create. Okay, ready? Deep breath. I create mindful moments throughout the day, reminding myself that I am love and miracles are natural. Oh yeah, oh yeah, baby, that's a good one. <laughs> I know it's backwards, because <laughs> I have to tell my mom this every time, but it's the camera. In order for me to be the right way on the table, I have to be the wrong way up here. So I'll read it again. I create mindful moments throughout the day reminding myself that I am love and miracles are natural. All right, so you guys keep thinking that during today. And we're gonna have lots of these awesome moments on our three day next week. So I hope you can join us. If you have no idea what I'm talking about, <laughs> just write in the comment, I have no idea what you're talking about and I will send you the link because I, you know, Sometimes I feel like, has everybody heard everything I've said a zillion times, but I know some people haven't. So have a fantastic rest of your day. Be creative. It's so important. Even if it's cutting a few snowdrops, nanny. <laughs> okay. And let's see what else. 
I will have a little chit chat with Basil. <laughs> I will, I'll send you the link, Julie. <laughs> I'll tell her not to eat mice while I'm on my live, okay? <makes noise> Hello, Erin, my sweet friend. <makes noise> Goodbye, Kathy and Debbie. Hey, Debbie. <laughs> Debbie might've caught the tail end of that one. Okay, Patty, have a great one. And Karen, and keep sharing your awesome beautifulness. I need the link, came in late. Okay, I'll send the link. Hug for Basil. <laughs> My husband will be so excited that she got a mouse, you guys, that she will probably get like extra treats or something. You guys have a fantastic day. Love you. I'll see you Tuesday. Be creative. That's right, Debbie. Be creative. Bye, Suzanne. I feel like I'm on romper room. I want to say goodbye to everybody. I'll see you soon. Two days. Bye-bye.